This Dime Pro 2 video demonstrates a great way to manage different alarm levels that may be required across many different engine types. Let's assume that you have your test cell, your test system all set up, all the sensors, etc. <clears throat> and the main thing that's changing between the different tests that you're running are the alarm levels, the different alarm levels that are required by the different engine models or vehicle makes that you are testing. So what we want here is a solution that allows us to easily manage the situation um, uh, regardless of the number of different engine models or uh, different alarm channels that we uh, have in our system. Now in 9 Pro 2, the alarms are configured in the mask file. So one way to handle this situation, which would probably not be a very good solution, um, would be to just enter a fixed number in, in your mask file. However, the problem with that is um, the mask file is what defines your system, all the different channels and sensors, that sort of thing. And uh, that, of course, is common between all the different tests that you're running. So if you are just putting in a fixed number, that means you're going to have to make copies of that mask file, uh, one different copy for each different um, uh, engine model, that sort of thing. So if you're, if you're uh, supporting two dozen different engine types in your facility, you're going to have two dozen different mask files, and the only difference between those would be those alarm level settings. And uh, that's not going to be manageable over time and be too error prone. So this video is going to show you a really nice way to handle that situation. So for this solution, we, we only need one mask file. We need one parameter table and we need one test profile service. And uh, I'll explain all of those as we go through the video. So the first thing I want to show you is just how this actually works, what the operator will actually see. You're getting ready to run a new test. We have a digital readout here that says engine type. And then over here, I've just got a couple um, uh, channels set up that are going to be the actual thresholds for our alarms. So a real simple example just so we can see what's going on. So all the operator has to do is just right click on engine type and say set channel value or just double click and it's going to pop up a list of all the different engine models that we currently are supporting. And we can select model 2. This can be anything. You can set all this up with Time Pro 2 and say accept. And I've color coded these so you can see them change really easily. But basically, we just selected the engine model that we're going to test. And then all the alarm thresholds for that particular engine type, in this case, we have a low pressure threshold and a, uh, uh, a high oil temp um, threshold, those automatically get set. And you can just simply start the test and uh, everything runs as normal. We go over here and select a, another engine model type. Same thing happens again. It goes ahead and sets the alarm thresholds for that particular engine type, and then you can go ahead and start the test. Now, all this behavior is programmed with the um, existing facilities in Dime Pro 2, so let's see how that's actually done. The first thing is we need to set up a mask file the appropriate channels in our mask file. So instead of fixed limits, we're going to use what's called dynamic limits in uh, Dime Pro 2 masks. And um, so what you want to do is you're going to have a, uh, a simple test constant channel, and I've got two here. And the purpose of those channels is simply to hold the value of the alarm threshold for each channel. So if you have 10 different thresholds that you need to support, you're going to have 10 different of uh, these channels. So here's the channel oil pressure low. That's going to hold the threshold for our uh, oil pressure, uh, the low threshold. And here we have another one that's going to hold the threshold for our, our high oil temperature alarm. There's nothing much to really set up in these. You just got to make sure that the channels exist in your mask file. Then the next thing is the channels that are actually uh, the measured channels that we actually want to alarm. Uh, here we have oil temperature and oil pressure. So we want to edit those. 
go to alarms and with our oil temperature channel we want to have a high failure <clears throat> threshold so I check high failure and then instead of entering a fixed number here I say use custom threshold so I put a checkbox there and then I click on the custom threshold tab and here I can just enter some idle code and whatever this idle code returns uh, whatever number that returns that's going to be the threshold that's in effect um, uh, during the test. Now this can be any idle uh, expression, any volatile expression to uh, return the number that you want. In this case we're just returning the value of our channel oil temp high which holds our threshold and there'll be another mechanism that changes the value of that channel. Uh, in more advanced applications, perhaps this could be an actual formula or something so that the threshold is changing uh, depending on the actual point in the test that you are currently at. Anyway, that's all you have to do. There's an idle editor here and you say return and then the name of the channel and the semicolon. You're good to go. And then similarly for oil pressure, same kind of thing. You go to alarms, and in this case, we want a low warning. So we go to the Learn Warning tab, and we say Low Warning Enabled. Use Custom Threshold. And here we return the oil pressure low channel that we set up. And that's it. So that sets up the actual dynamic alarm mechanisms for our oil temp and our oil pressure channels. Then another thing we want to set up in our mask is called an enumeration. And that's this channel here, engine type. So let's go back over to our real-time data screen. And when the operator double clicks on the engine type digital readout, it gets a list of all of the uh, engine models that, the, that we currently support. So how do, we, how do we make that happen? So in the mask file, we add a test constant called engine type. <clears throat> and then um, on the enumeration tab, you go ahead and you click this little button here and that allows you to add uh, a value and uh, a, a text label. So here, so this is where you would put in all of your engine model, um, uh, model numbers and those can be uh, any text and combination of text and numbers that you want and then you assign an actual number to each of those and I'll show you how that connects over to our table later. <clears throat> But basically, you have to set up one of these. And we'll come back to this to finish it off here in a little bit. So you remember I said in addition to our mask, we need two other elements. We need a parameter table and uh, we need a test profile service. So let's take a look at the parameter table. <clears throat> uh, parameter table is nothing other than a simple CSV file. And um, there, these are the different elements to the parameter table. Let me explain those. Uh, this first cell here, you want to enter in just an ID that you're going to reference when you're actually loading the table. So instead of the uh, file's name, this is what you're going to use to actually reference the table itself. So I've, I've uh, typed in engine alarms here. And then this column, these are called row descriptors, but in this in our particular application here, this is going to be the engine model numbers that we want. And then the value that we entered in that enumeration in the mask up here for engine type, that's going to be the row number. So this would be one, two, three, like that. Okay. And then uh, you put your channel names here across this row. So you can see we have oil pressure low, that's our channel name. We have oil temp high right there. So then we have a table of all of our alarm thresholds across this um, row and all of our engine model types across this down this column here. And then we just enter in the actual alarm thresholds that uh, are applicable uh, for that, those particular engine models that we're supporting. So this table could be as big as you want. You could have as many thresholds across the top as you need and it support as many engine models uh, as you need as well. And then that third piece is a test profile service that we need because we're going to need some programmatic mechanism that's going to actually load in these values based on the model that we've uh, selected. So that's nothing other than just a simple test profile. <clears throat> so I've uh, written a little test profile here. It's the name of the file is set alarm thresholds. 
And as you can see, it just has three steps. But the first one, bring up our parameter table so we can see that as well. The first step just loads parameter table engine alarms. That's engine alarms, that's what you reference there. The second step loads parameter table row engine type. So it's the value of engine type. That's that enumeration channel that we set up. So that's going to load one of these rows corresponding to the current value of channel engine type. It'll load row one or two or three. And when it loads that row, it's going to set the values of our alarm threshold channels. That's how that works. So the final piece to bring this all together is back in the mask here. I'm going to double click on engine type. We can edit that channel type. This is the one where we set up all our enumerations. So again, just to reiterate, the value for these enumerations or our model numbers for our engines, those values correspond to these row numbers, one, two, three, row one, row two, row three. So that's important. And then the final piece is we need to um, uh, trigger what happens when the operator actually selects a model type. And that's done here in the on change event handler for the um, engine type channel. So, and in there, what I do is I launch the uh, run the service set alarm thresholds. That's our test profile. This guy right here. <clears throat> now, a service that's nothing more than um, a test profile that runs in the background, if you're not familiar with those. Basically, the way DynePro2 works is you have a, a primary test, and that test is the one that you're actually um, uh, using to run your, you know, your real test or your, uh, your main test, so to speak. But the, you can also uh, run test profile code. Um, test profile scripts using the test profile editor. You can also run those in the background separate from your main test. And uh, those are just running all the time, if you like. And so it's another uh, way to launch and use the facilities that are available in the test scripting language of TimePro2. So when the value of engine type changes, the system detects that, and it will call this on change event. That runs the service set alarm thresholds, and all that does is run our actual um, uh, background test service. And then, of course, you need to tie all this together by loading it up in a project. So that's probably fairly self-explanatory, but we have our mask file here in a project and we have to install our table and we have to install our, our uh, test profile service. So let's tie it all together and see how it actually works. The operator will double click on engine type, selects the engine that is type that's going to actually be tested, clicks accept. So that changed the, when he, when the operator selected that, he actually set the value of channel engine type to a one. If he goes to model two, he set the value to two. And because it's three, he sets the value to three. Could be setting it to any number, but we set it up in our mask to be one, two, and three. And those correspond to the row numbers in the table. <clears throat> so when he sets that channel value, then this run service gets called. That runs this test script. When this test script runs, it loads up this table, and then it loads up the row for the value that corresponds to the value of channel engine type, one, two, or three. And then the way tables work is when it loads a row, it's going to automatically set the channel values for all these channels that are listed here across the top. In this case, these are going to be our uh, alarm threshold values. So those alarm threshold values um, are set when the table loads its row. And then 
when we actually run our test, we saw that the alarm threshold was whatever is stored in that value uh, in the uh, channel oil temp high in this case. So that's really it. If we go back here and look at this slide, see we have one mask file for this solution. We had the table, our parameter table, and we had the service that actually um, is what loads the appropriate row in the table setting our alarm threshold values. So this table That's where we store all of our uh, alarm thresholds. So we have one mask file and one table, and the table is really easy to update and, uh, and modify. So if we add another uh, engine type or model into our system, or we uh, need to make adjustments here, we just go into this table. It's really easy to read for uh, a Dime Pro 2 user and make changes, and then you just reload your project, and, um, and all the uh, changes easily propagate through the system. So over time, as things change and um, or you need to manage a lot of different engine types or a vehicle makes that sort of thing, this is a real simple solution. It will always be one mask file. It will always be one table. Um, and that service itself, will one test profile service, will uh, never need to change. So really, the, the table here is the only thing that would need to change over time, and that's really easy to edit. So the features in this video uh, require Dime Pro 2 version 1.7.37 or newer.